you guys are in for a banger of an episode. In today's episode of e-commerce explosive growth, we are taking a look at movement watches and how they literally went from 20,000 bucks in debt to building a $300 million company. Now, as some of you may know, what we do in this series is we analyze and dissect what some of the top e-commerce brands have done to have incredible success with their brand. If you guys don't know me, my name is Jaime and I own a social media marketing agency helping online brands transform into market leaders. And with that being said, let's get right into the video where we're gonna be dissecting actionable strategies that you guys are gonna be able to take and implement either on your e-commerce business or on your e-commerce agency to get incredible results for your clients. Because if you own a social media marketing agency, just like I do, you wanna make sure that not only do you sign incredible clients that pay you very good money, but that you're also able to get incredible results for your clients so that they're happy and you feel fulfilled and you have incredible longevity for your clients because that is an incredibly important aspect of building an agency and it makes building an agency actually incredibly blissful. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. How Movement Watches climbed to a 300 million exit in just five years with zero dollars in funding. In this presentation, I will cover the top three viral strategies movement uses to rocket fuel growth and how you can apply them to stand out from a competitive crowd. Now, here is the scenario that, that, that I want you guys to uh, imagine. We've got two 20 year olds with $20,000 in debt. They've got a big mission to inspire people to live on their own terms. And so they understand their audience very well, which I'll talk about in just a second. And it's a common trade and a common theme that we're seeing across all brands that we've looked at in this series. I'm talking High Smile, Gymshark, uh, Kylie Cosmetics, Dollar Shave Club. And so they're able to call out their audience of go-getters, innovators, dreamers, like for example, Apple, uh, who does a great job at this. They also want a nice watch to show off to friends. So there's no way they're dropping 500 to even $5,000 on a watch, on a, on a luxury watch. And the final thing is they've got a big vision to build a lifestyle brand and disrupt one of the most competitive industries, which is the watch industry doing over $8 billion a year. And so that is the scenario. And here's what the founders, which by the way, I'll talk about at the end of this video as a little bonus. Um, here's what they accomplished in just five years. So they made over a hundred million without any external capital. They purely just ride on crowdfunding instead, which I'll talk about in just a second. Also, they sold over 1.5 million watches plus accessories, which is a crazy, crazy number, especially in the watch space. And inspired a movement of people wanting to adventure, create, and dare to disrupt the norm. And that was really their, their vision of the brand. And finally, a 26 plus a 27 year old, which we can see in the picture, uh, they ended up selling the brand for 300 million, setting themselves apart for quality, stylish and minimalist uh, designs at radically fair prices, which was really the unique selling point of the brand and what took the uh, watch industry by storm. So that is what they accomplished in five years. And here is what we are gonna cover. So the first thing is gonna be social media plus influencer marketing, how they supercharge their growth by building trust with potential customers and retain loyal fans. So that's gonna be the first thing. The second thing is gonna be viral marketing, how they use content marketing to connect with audience and make them feel part of a movement. And the final thing is paid marketing, the top exact approaches movement uses to get insane returns on their investment, plus actionable strategies you can apply right after this video. So without further ado, social media plus influencer marketing. Now, the first thing is the trust they built with their crowdfunding campaigns. So they researched and understood market very well, and they had detailed information on vision, mission, and movement. And look, there's many ways of starting a brand, and there's many ways of having success with a brand online, but undeniably, one key component of that is making sure that you understand your market like no one else, right? And those brands that go the crowdfunding Kickstarter way, I'm not saying that's the best way to go, right? But that actually need investment from people, they gave a lot of thought into these things, into the mission, into the vision, into the movement of the brand, into what actually sets them apart from the other brands in the market. Why? Because people actually need to invest into the brand. And so I'm not saying it's by far the best way to go, right? But it just forces brands to actually think about this stuff before launching a product to market. And then all of a sudden realizing that the market doesn't want it. And so by going the crowdfunding way, you already get a sense of whether the, the market wants the product by just seeing whether people actually invest into the idea and whether you can get it created or not. So that's really the first thing. The second thing is user generated content. It creates a ton of relatability and trust with brand and product, especially for a new audience. And we've seen brands like Highsmouth, Gymshark using this as same strategy because people connect with people, they don't just connect with products. If movement watches had only posted about their watches, then it wouldn't have had any traction because people need to connect a product to a lifestyle, to a person, to a way of living life, right? To a mission, to a vision. That is why those things are very, very powerful. And the final thing is social proof. So it created this viral loop effect that makes more people want to join the brand. 
And one of the things they did massively well is they had a referral program where they had a 15% commission incentive and it actually helped them scale very fast. Another thing that built massive rapport and trust was the sheer amount of reviews that they were getting for their products. So that is social media. When it comes to influencer marketing, they were very, very smart about the way they did this. And instead of targeting very big influencers, what Movement did is they targeted small to medium sized influencers. And the reason why that is, is because small to medium sized influencers tend to connect with their audience so much more than bigger influencers. The great thing about massive influencers is they've got massive reach and deliverability. So you can get your product in front of millions of people. But the great thing about small to medium sized influencers is that number one, obviously they're less expensive. And number two, the conversions tend to be much greater because people have actually built a lot of trust and rapport with this person. They can actually identify with them, right? When someone follows a Kardashian on Instagram, for example, they don't really do it because they identify with them. The reason why they do it is simply for entertainment uh, purposes, mostly, right? And so what they did very well is obviously uh, Instagram uh, posts exposed over 3 million people to the brand without spending a fortune. And they launched a campaign with 62 influencers, averaging 47,000 followers each, which is not a huge number, right? And the reason why it worked so well, as I was just saying, is followers have more trust in small to medium sized influencers. And so you tend to get more conversions with smaller influencers than bigger ones for less money, okay? So that is social media plus influencer marketing. The next thing on the list is viral marketing. What movement did amazing well is they told a story, right? And again, this has been a common trait of all the brands that we've taken a look at is that they actually tell a story, right? Most brands out there, especially the ones that make the transition from retail to online, to social media, to e-commerce, they don't really tell the story. They think the products are just going to speak for themselves. And if you're doing that, then you're obviously going to lose. And if you're not telling the story for your clients through ad copy, through your landing pages, through your email marketing, then you're obviously going to lose to those brands who are telling the story, who are personalizing the customer journey, who are building a report, who are building a connection with their customer and their prospects. And so what Movement did amazingly well is they built a movement on innovation. They inspired people to buy a watch and feel part of a bigger mission of people striving to live life on their own terms. And so people could really identify with that mission. Another thing they did amazingly well is value-driven content. And so they first started with the story, then they created value-driven content out of that, and then they funneled that into the products. And that is how brands that are having insane success with e-commerce are doing it, right? They start with the story, they create value-driven content, and then they introduce the products. The, the brands that are not having success is they go straight for the pitch. They go straight to sell the product. And yes, you might get a few conversions there, but there's no customer journey. You're not telling a story that people can identify with. And so their unique value proposition and mission behind the brand brought a common product to life, right? And brought attention to watches, which people are very used to, right? It wasn't like a revolutionary innovation, right? And, and product, uh, but the, the actual unique selling point and the story brought the product to life. So that is the, the second thing. And the final thing, is adverts, right? So they use value-driven, fun, and advertorial-looking adverts, which means instead of looking like an ad, it looks like something you'd see on your newsfeed from your friends or family, or something you'd see on a news website and that actually catches your attention and adds value to you. So that is that for viral marketing. The next thing is dropping a big thumbs up. If you're enjoying this episode, go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. YouTube is off when that thing turns blue, so I really appreciate it. And with that being said, let's get back into the video. The final thing is paid marketing. They tapped into various avenues mainly being Facebook advertising, obviously including Instagram. They didn't just sell a product, they sold the lifestyle, the feeling of wearing the watch, the emotion. And so they used a lot of customer generated content for realness and actually getting people to identify with the lifestyle. And you might have seen some of the adverts that movement I usually runs. And uh, here we can see this on the screen. The next thing they mastered was email marketing. It was actually the highest return on investment with their consistent strategy. And so what movement did really, really well uh, that actually helped them stand out from other watch brands on top of the story and top of the things that we've spoken about is making sure that people actually come back for more. And typically when you think of a watch brand, people typically just buy one watch from that watch brand for the rest of their life. And not only do they wear that watch for a lifetime, but maybe they pass it down to their family. What movement wanted to create is they wanted to create repeat customers, right? And so they wanted people to buy a watch for night, right? But also a watch that they could wear during the day, maybe a watch that they could wear to the office, basically a bunch of watches for different occasions. And the way they did that is mainly through email marketing, increasing the lifetime value of a customer. And so doing this, they solved the one-time buyer problem that most uh, watch companies face, and they just kept people coming back for more and more. So that is email marketing. And the final thing is Google Ads. And so for Google Ads, they showcase benefits on short phrases um, with not a clear call to action, but they tapped into so many different keywords, up to 772 plus keywords worldwide. And so they really just dominated that niche of watches that weren't incredibly expensive, but that were affordable and you could buy more than one uh, for different occasions. So that is that for paid advertising. And the final thing, as I promised, is a low bonus on the founders. Because if you're anything like me, I don't just want to take a look at the actionable strategies and the, the hacks. Yes, that is important. And it's important that you implement this on your own brands and your own clients. 
but I always want to take a look at the founders and the way they think and the way they built the empire. Where did they start? What are the actions they took? And where did they get to? And hearing their stories and their journey actually fascinates me. So very important stuff to take a look at the founders and uh, the people behind the, the huge empires. And so a little info on the, the founders, Jake Kaysen, hopefully I'm not butchering their names, and Kramer Laplante. First of all, what I really like about these guys is that they execute fast. Yes, they had a big vision. Yes, they had a big idea, but execution is what actually matters, right? And so everyone can have disruptive ideas. And I'm sure if you're watching this and you're an entrepreneur, you have ideas that you want to implement, but execution is all that matters. People place so much importance on cool ideas. And I always love when people want to keep their ideas secret. Sure, there's a lot of value in ideas, but the hard part about an idea is actually executing. And so what these guys did really well is they had a, a really big idea, right? But they took action despite going against well-established brands and going against big, big dogs in their space. So that's the first thing. The second thing is sustainable marketing strategy. They knew that the way to scale consistently and stand out is with reliable long-term marketing plan. And so yes, their influencer marketing strategy was very, very good and very smart, but they didn't just rely on influencers promoting their products, right? They had a whole back end where sure influencer might have been their cold strategy, right? Along with obviously Facebook ads, but they also had an insane retargeting infrastructure with Facebook ads, with Google ads, with Instagram ads, uh, as well as email marketing for the back end. And so instead of thinking short term, like most uh, dropshipping brands, unfortunately, because from the research, I'm pretty sure they started as a dropshipping brand. They actually thought long term and they thought about building the brand and a, a marketing strategy that actually had longevity. And the final thing is step-by-step -step, uh, strategy. So what they did is they surrounded themselves with experts as well as mentors, right? That had been where they wanted to be. By experts, I mean Facebook ads experts, I'm talking influencer experts. And so they got people to fill in the gaps where they were not as strong and leverage that to build an incredible brand. And not only that, but they used social media platforms to be close competitors. Competitors that were just not as aware as to how to navigate this uh, social media landscape and, uh, and this new way of selling online. So that is a bit about the founders. And that is that for this video. If you enjoyed it, guys, go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Also, leave down below any comments, any questions you may have on this video. I'll be sure to check those out. And the final thing is if you haven't joined the free private mentor community on Facebook, the client closures, it's an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency and level up in life. And we're talking e-commerce growth, for example, just like this, right? And we're talking e-commerce growth strategies, for example, like the ones you saw today. We're talking sales for your agency, outreach, lead sourcing. We're talking how to close more clients. We're talking how to get incredible results and a ton of other stuff. So you're not gonna wanna miss it. So go ahead and check out the link in the description and you can apply if you're a good fit, we will let you in. And uh, as always guys, I hope everything's going well in your agency journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.